Welcome to the Retirement Lifestyle Show. I'm your co-host, Roshan Langani, here with Adrian Nicholson. We have a very special episode for you today. This is our 200th episode. Adrian, how do you feel about that? It's awesome. I'm excited. Now it's finally here, ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 200. I, what has it been? Three years? Or is that four years, actually? It's been four years, correct? Yeah, so our first episode of the Retirement Lifestyle Show actually came out four years ago from this week. Oh, excellent. So we've we've, we've been uh, pretty consistent then as far as getting these uh, information out there and then recorded. Our first season, we broke down the book, Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. And then, um, which I think there's some great information in there. Uh, definitely still a fan of the book uh, as well. Then in season two, Uh, That's when Eric joined us and we actually broke down how to build a financial plan. And I think that's interesting for for people out there who want to build their own plan. It uh, also gives you the perspective of two uh, uh, of really a couple different views on it, right? With certain assumptions and things. I think there are a lot of similarities, but there were definitely some differences there. And then we shifted over to season three, where we changed the name of the uh, of the show to the Retirement Lifestyle Show, and we focus on a, a broad variety of topics, a lot in planning, investing, and so on. And Adrian and I are going to review some of uh, what we thought are top five episodes, and if we've got you know, honorable mentions or other thoughts in there, we can uh, definitely add that as well. But Adrian, I'm going to ask you to start first. Uh, What starts out for you? So I don't know about you. I did not, I don't have my list in a particular order. I I just uh, looked at the episode, so I don't necessarily have a ranking. It's just, here's the way I looked at it. Did you rank yours as far as number one being the best, like your favorite of all of them and number five being your fifth favorite? Or how did you, um, how did you rank them? Yeah, Roshan. So similar to you, no particular order. These are my top five episodes. Definitely felt like going down memory lane when I was preparing for this episode. And you're talking about 200 episodes over four years. That's pretty much uh, 50 a year, basically once every week, which is, you know, a lot to choose from. But I'm happy with my list and I'm excited to get into it. And that'd be awesome if we had some crossover. I have something on your list. I mean, 200 episodes. I got to imagine some listeners and viewers be like, hey, they definitely coordinated. There's no there's no way they had the same episodes on there. But uh, yeah, I'm ready to get it, into it when you're ready. Oh, good. What is the first one that you that you have? So the first one on my list is one that we recently recorded. I like this episode a lot. It's called The Financial Guide for a Better Tomorrow. This is episode 197. And the reason why I chose this episode, if we have any new listeners or viewers today, or if you're somebody that's never checked out any of our podcast episodes or videos before, I think this would be a great video where you can really hit the ground running, kind of a crash course really too, if you're somebody that's never really sit down, took control of your finances. I think this would be a great episode to start off on because we touch on a lot of topics in a short amount of time where we look at planning for financial future, saving a 401k, building cash, paying off consumer debt, insurances, purchasing a home, education savings, and retirement savings. So this episode has a lot of content in it. And I think this is just a great place for people to start off, get to know us, see how we interact, our opinions on these important topics that really can, like the episode say, guide somebody for a better tomorrow when it comes to their finances. Yeah, I like that one as as well. Uh, that episode, I remember while recording it, my niece is a recent recent college graduate, and she is uh, starting to build her financial future. I was really thinking about her, and um, we mentioned this in the episode. I, I think I'm I'm saying my niece not based on age, but based on stage, right? And that can vary by uh, individual. I think we mentioned that in the episode how I had a client who. You know, she was a stay-at-home mom. She wasn't a uh, you know gra- a graduate of law school, but a stay-at-home mom, and then hadn't worked for 20 years. Got divorced and was starting in her 50s. You know, starting uh, her to build for her financial future. So I think that's a, a very good foundational episode. Uh, I think there's a lot of good information in there. Adrian, I'm not sure what what you were looking for for standout episodes, but I always try to focus on things that I think are actionable. That's a very actionable 
episode where you can if you had if you're just starting out and you want to build a foundation well that's a good place to start to listen or if you've been doing it for years and you want to check yourself to say hey have i done all the right things have i got all the basics in place already before you go to the more advanced stuff that's a, a very good place to look and see where you stand and i'll go on to mine um <clears throat> my uh the first one on my list now i said i had no particular order that is ac that is partially accurate the uh part that is not accurate with that as far as my uh particular order was i did just start on our episode list and work my way backwards so you'll see that the numbers are, are are definitely descending yeah and so mine i think couples well with um your episode but it's uh 10 practical practical steps for wealth building success that's episode 191 and uh we uh we go over the 10 seeds of wealth building on there where uh and i believe that's from the book the wealthy gardener uh where we share what you can do there and it's some of the some of the different thoughts on there i'll just highlight a couple things that he had, that he had said and once again the the episodes there so you can listen to all 10 i'll actually i'll identify them but it was think wealth uh why you need to start being frugal rich people stay rich by living like they're broke wealth is built on profitability get out of debt there are a difference between good and bad debt don't just save save urgently consistently track your net worth uh how to beat inflation minimize your odds of losing money take advantage of the power of compound interest the average and it goes over the average holding periods of us stocks and the ultimate goal of being wealthy so those are the 10 things that it goes into but i think that's a good one with the episode you had selected adrian i think that is a good foundational episode for people i think this is also another good foundational one however uh i think what this touch, touches on specifically with tracking your net worth is you need to be vigilant or even with save urgently or 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 being frugal you need to be vigilant towards your goals financially towards your, your savings etc and i'm a fan of the book and i uh, i think this is another very good episode mm -hmm. yeah it's a great episode i know i know we're biased here but again i really like about especially for that episode how they kind of with each one of those points or tips that they brought out they had a story to align with it to help you really wrap your head around the concept and i'm somebody that really enjoys storytelling i think it's a great way to learn and really understand a concept in a, in a real world example so it's another good one there i like that one i'm really excited to hear what your other ones are going to be so I'm really well, looking forward we'll, to it. well go, yeah we'll go back and forth so adrian it's your turn what do you have next on the list so the next one on my list is episode 166, and this is our okay. most popular episode on YouTube. So I had to have this on my list. This is bear market stages. Where are we now? And uh, like I said, this is one of our most popular episodes on YouTube. So I definitely want to just review this one and look at this one and talk about this one today. I definitely like our thumbnail, the video cover. It's uh, a bear on it waving at you. It's just an example of a bear market. I'm not sure if it's a brown bear or a grizzly bear. I'm not not really sure, but uh, I think it's a, it's a funny one and it's a good one. The content in it, I like it a lot. And we just break down the stages of a bear market. And we recorded this episode uh, a year ago and looking back on it, based on where we're at today, within the first eight minutes of the episode, I think we did a great job identifying the bear market stage that we thought we were currently in. So it's kind of just giving us a pat on the back, just looking back a year ago and seeing what we were talking about based on where we are today. I think it's uh, something worthwhile just to check out because I think it's ultimately a very valuable podcast when you look back at it that can really help you guide you if you're ever in a bear market and can give you some advice and help really fuel your investment decisions. Yeah, and the other thing I'll tell you that I've, I've noticed as we go back is we have some episodes that I think are are timeless right they're not related to anything going on currently the, and then we have some episodes that are definitely related to what um what's happening right like this bear market one which i really like this one as well this was a uh one that um barely did not make my list so it was a uh, one of my honorable mention ones what what you can see i think is not only our thinking but what we thought of um what everyone else was thinking so in april of 2023 
uh, the markets, you know, had a really bad 2022. They were starting to to uptick a little bit at that point in April, and then and then you know goes up till June, then goes really down until October, and then comes back, giving a little bit of a uh, you know market background as you know just remembering so vividly as we lived through it. But I think you can see that we as well as uh, investors in general, we're really concerned about bear markets and trying to find some uh, uh, some comfort as far as where are we, where are we going? And I think that's uh, what was very timely. That's also an episode I would reference the next time we see a, a significant market decline. Uh, I would send people to listen to that to let them know, you know, well, here, here are the stages, here's where we are now and, and you know, where things will be going. I think it'll help you feel better uh, so that you can stay the course, which is the the ultimate goal as an investor, right? Is to be able to stay the course, assuming you're happy with your analysis and research. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A good use to reference if, like you said, there's a bear market, that's something that you can go to and just see if you can pull any information that can, that can help. Yes. Now I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit, Adrian, but I, hopefully you will forgive me and allow me to, um, to do this. I had to combine two episodes. So my my pick for for my my second pick is really pick two and three together. Yeah. Uh, and so I still have five. So I kind of cheated with six, but I think once I give you the reason, the reasoning, you will um, you will um, uh, allow this. So give me a pass on this. But I have episode one fifty six and one fifty seven, uh, yeah. the art of long term investing. And I think yes. that they, they uh, Eric always used to love a series uh, and always want to talk about a series. This, I don't think, this was not intentionally planned to be a series. It sort of worked that way with the way the, uh, uh, the volume of content was. But this is what I will look at when we're, I'm picking a stock. So the reason I like this episode is one, it's... Um, uh, it's an aggregate of a lot of research, analysis, books, experience. My experience is the experience of, of authors of books in investing. And I think this really does give someone a guide if they want to uh, select stocks. Now, granted, their guide is to a methodology that that I have seen fit for me and I believe is is the the way to go. So a little bit, a little bit of bias there. However, it's not that I think it's the best or the way to go uh, from a purely subjective perspective, nor is it all my work only. As I said, it's an aggregate of everything I've seen that great investors have done that I've been able to pull together. And I think, as I said earlier, I look for things that are actionable and things you can actually, actually take steps on to help yourself from planning your future or from um, from selecting your investments, and I think this is these two episodes can help you take advantage of the decades of study I've done and uh, apply it to yourself right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, those episodes are packed with so much information on there. And it can sometimes maybe feel overwhelming for a listener of viewer to check that out. But over time, as you start learning more, and just really just trying to understand the concepts and what we're talking about, you can really find some valuable things that can help you out in the future when it comes to just investing, managing your portfolio, whatever it is. Yeah, and it starts with going all the way from screening to analyzing the, the stock directly. So I think you can really go from start to finish there. Um, uh, at the same time, it's definitely not uh, an end all list. There are plenty of investors that have, um, that have uh, done well in different approaches in different manners. I'm, I'm a basketball fan, as I mentioned on here before. I was recently listening to an um, episode with uh, JJ Redick, uh, a podcast episode with him talking about, and he mentions a, a story about Kobe where they're, um, and this is really early in Redick's career. I don't know if you know if he's an NBA or still a college player, but he's on Team USA. And he says, Kobe asks him, hey, do you want to shoot after? And he said he realized pretty quickly Kobe wasn't wanting to shoot. Kobe was watching him shoot to see if he could pick up anything from his shot. And, you know, there's so many famous stories of of Kobe being constantly learning and, and constantly um, asking questions. You know, there's a Gary Payton story of him asking defense. Michael Jordan has a story about Kobe asking him about a turnaround. And uh, I only bring that up because 
I think this is a great place for you to look at. And even if you decide hey, this is not an investment method for me, if you're a student of the game, it'll be very valuable as I will look at any one strategy, how any successful investor has done and, and constantly studying, studying it. So uh, as I said, I'm definitely a little bit biased, but this is uh, on my list of uh, top five slash six episodes. Yeah. And then based on what you said about JJ Reddick and Kobe, it just makes you think about just all the episodes that we recorded, all the content that we have out there and just for our listeners and viewers or people that check out those episodes or watch them or listen to them. Yes, some are going to apply to you. Some may not apply to you. You might pick up one or two things here and there from the episode. Uh, may, maybe not, but what you described, Roshan, just having an appetite for learning, always seeking other references, always getting other opinions is is very valuable. I mean, you might be on the perfect track and you and you might not need it, but sometimes it's always good just to get another opinion or just just research, do your homework and look into other things because if something does come up that can help you, you know, that's something that you want to have found if you were just sort of just sticking on the path that you, you've you always been on. So yeah, that's definitely uh, a great episode that you mentioned. I really appreciate you always being an open book about talking about your processes and what you learned as well. I'm sure, I hope our listeners also feel the same way. Yeah, yeah. I hope hopefully they'll find this find this helpful and be able to uh, uh, be able to improve their situation, as I had said earlier. Next on your on your list. Yeah, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit since you talked about like cheating and combining episodes because I kind of did something similar, which is yeah, which is funny. But uh, so what I have on my list is the market volatility episode. So this was our first episode split into three episodes. So it's episode one, two, and three combined into just one overarching market volatility episode. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, this was released four years ago. And I think the information still can be applied to today, which I think is just awesome. Looking back four years ago, re-listening to it and just still finding information. I was like, wow, you know, that's just something that I can still use or apply in today's market. So it really is some timeless market advice packed into a bunch of episodes. So, and just looking back at it again, four years ago, I just liked a lot of parts that we talked on there. I mentioned uh, four years ago, the importance of risk versus reward, a concept that is still crucial to today looking at investment opportunities and say, hey, does the reward outweigh the risk? Is this something I'm willing to take? Is the loss something I'm willing to deal with, with whatever positive outcome may be if it goes you know, my way? I mean, it really is a couple episodes that are jam-packed with information. And something else too I liked about the episode is where we talked about how market volatility impacts individuals differently based on whatever life stages they're at, whether it's early career, mid-career or retirement, depending on what the markets are doing, it's going to impact people differently. And that's something that we always talked about. You, the listener and viewer, you are unique. Your situation's unique. So something that goes wrong may go right for somebody else. Somebody thing that goes right for somebody may go wrong for somebody else. And I think that's something that we were trying to really hone in on four years ago. And then the Next thing we added was behavioral finance, which is something that's always something you need to focus on during turbulent markets because exploring human emotions and biases is extremely important based on whatever the markets are doing because this can really impact the decisions you make in a time that can be very crucial to be correct. So that's something too um, I wanted to add on. I have two other points, but is there anything you want to add on what I talked about so far, Roshan? No, you know, that, as you had said at the beginning, timeless, definitely to mind on this. And uh, I wish I could remember the statistic exactly, but I was recently, uh, it was either reading or listening to someone talk about uh, Buffett. And they said that, you know, they analyzed his letters and I couldn't find the exact percentage. I couldn't even tell you who the uh, author or speaker was at this time. So I apologize for not being able to, to give credit, but they analyzed his letters they his letters to investors and you know going back to his partnership days and they had said that he talks more about sentiment and the investor than he does talk about like actual investing hmm. so oh, it touched on both episodes that you talked about one you mentioned risk and second thing that you mentioned was the behavioral finance which is that actually and i've heard similar things talked about for um benjamin graham's book the intelligent investor which many will say is arguably the you know the greatest investing book written 
uh, where they say he spends more time, which he does, talking about uh, the investor, uh, the investor's mentality, discipline, versus talking about um, uh, investment or formulas and analysis. And then the other points that we talked about too, in those episodes, we explored historical market events. Sometimes the best way to just really help gain information is look at history. So I thought that was cool that we touched on that. We talked about market timing, rebalancing portfolio adjustments, and a dynamic spending approach, which is something we haven't talked about in a while as well. So when we, when I was listening and hearing about that, that's something that I look more into too, a concept that we haven't talked about in a while. And then ultimately with market volatility, just understanding one's risk tolerance and capacity to take on risk in order to help manage any type of market environment that you are a part of, just to ultimately help you to make the best decisions possible. And Adrian, can you repeat the episode numbers again that you're So it's our to? first, second, and third episode of Retirement Lifestyle Show. So you're probably gonna have to do a lot of scrolling because we have a, a lot of episodes in there, but it's our first three episodes. Uh, excellent, excellent. And um, uh, next, I, I guess you combined as well. So I'll go on to mine. I was going to tell you to go to go twice, but uh, and I've, I've noticed a little bit of a theme with with mine. It, it's definitely more investment driven and more uh, where I think you can learn and uh, or piggyback on what we've learned. But episode one thirty three, it's uh, we we review the book by Adam Cecil, uh, insights from where the money is. And um, here, he, what he talks about in his book that we that we analyze is the evolution of of uh, investing and finding value. And he's got a checklist that uh, where that he uses to select uh, investments and businesses. Still reference that checklist now. So it's episode one thirty three. I think with the my previous um, uh, response of combining episode one fifty six and one fifty seven. The art of long-term investing. I think this will go well with that um, as well. So I think that's uh, if you're looking at improving as an investor and uh, learning from us, and, and you know, you're really using our work as a hack to save you time in your analysis. Those are three episodes I think that you you could find very valuable if you are an investor. Mm -hmm. So with that particular episode, let's just say uh, somebody that's listening to this episode right now is Roshan, what would you say your the most important thing from that episode is or one thing just to condense it into one or two sentences? What do you think the most valuable thing that was talked about or, or, or mentioned in that episode? I know it could be difficult because it was a particularly long episode, but if somebody was like, you know, Roshan, quick rundown quickly, what's the most important thing from that episode? I know that's a hard, maybe a hard question, but what would you say? Uh, three different things have come to my mind as you, as you've um, as you've mentioned that, but I'll, I'll go. I'll uh, and I've got the timestamps and everything up in front of me. But at 13 minutes and 25 seconds, we talk about a sustainable competitive advantage, and I think he, the author, does a, a very good job of breaking down what to look for and simplifying it as far as what is a sustainable competitive advantage. Mm. Yeah, Buffett will call that a moat. For a business, you know what will protect them from competitors that are that are um, out there or looking to take their you know, take their market share or or beat their business. I think that's a that's a good one. But yeah, very difficult question, Adrian, to to break it down. But I'll go with that one for now. I imagine if you ask me this question in an hour an hour from now, I might have a different answer for you. But no, that's I'll start all right. That. I mean, I'm sure somebody will appreciate that. They'll go to the right to that timestamp and be like, thank you, Roshan. I appreciate that. And if it really applies to them, something they like, they'll reach out to you and say, yeah, man, you're the man. Appreciate that, yeah. Roshan. I was just running out of time and I just wanted to get the best thing I could listening to that episode. Oh, there. Yeah. Excellent. So, Adrian, what's next on, on your list? So the next episode of my list is episode 59. And this is one of our, I would say, one of our most thought provoking episodes, which can really be translated to differently by people. Some may listen to the episode, view the episode and say, hey, this isn't really interesting. I don't really get it. This doesn't really apply to me. I don't know why this was on your top five, Adrian. Some people may listen to it and be like, wow, that was pretty intriguing. I never really thought about or considered those concepts before. So this is why I would recommend you check out episode 59 and just let me know how you take that episode or what your opinion was because um, this episode is called Financial Finish Lines. And 
This is where we discuss financial finish lines and how to establish them, what they are, why they're important. And this episode focuses on a lot of nuanced topics, such as how much is enough, absolute versus relative wealth, can money buy you happiness? So these are all some very intriguing topics that really cause some self-reflection, really looking at where you are today, evaluation, and really just have you grapple some tough topics that you might not have to, haven't really been on your radar before. And I think one of my favorite parts of this episode is where we talked about a Harvard study that pinpointed the biggest contributor to happiness. And this study spanned over 80 years and looked at a lot of different people's situation. So I, I don't want to give it away. So this is why I'm really recommending to check out this episode and figure out what this study found that contributed the biggest of people's happiness over an 80 year time frame. So this is why this episode's on my list. It's again, it's a very interesting episode. I like it a lot. And I just really want to know how people take it when they listen to it. If you don't like it at all, I'd love to hear it. If this an episode you really value a lot, maybe we touch on it again at some point. Yeah, and I think what um, selecting that episode and what we're talking about with financial finish lines really uh, underscores what the retirement lifestyle show is trying to do and trying to help with, right? It's not just investing, it's not just financial planning, it's impacting your whole uh, your whole financial life. So we, we've we um, got different areas for you to look at, different things for you to, Think about with the ultimate goal being the same of you having a better uh, life in retirement. And this isn't necessarily for people who have retired, or, uh, but I think most of us in the country are working towards that goal if you haven't retired already. And I think this can really help help with that. Just our show in general, and I, I'm a fan of that episode um, as well. Uh, I'll go on to my next one. and. And as I said, not intentionally, but sticking with the theme uh, is about how to improve investment performance. That's episode 132. And Adrian, what stood out for me and what I really liked is uh, what you actually touched on when you went over our first few episodes, which is um, uh, a disciplined approach to investing. So it very much touches on, it doesn't go necessarily into the... Uh, science and analysis of behavioral finance, but that, that is what, what we're talking about here. Being a disciplined investor, um, avoiding uh, making emotional investment decisions, uh, risk, and I'm just naming a, a few things that we, um, uh, that we touch on, the reality of investment risk, I, I think is a, a really important, important piece. But once again, this was during the market declines and what we were trying to do there was help people stick to making intelligent investment decisions versus making emotional investment decisions which when the markets are going down are very are they're easier to do you know, you're sick sick of seeing negative and red not red on your screen so you might if you just sell at least you're not going up or down and that's what i think people were thinking at the time and we want to tell you you know hold on make sure you make a good investment decision not saying you shouldn't sell but if you're selling just because you're scared of it going down versus because of the investment merits of the original decision the original decision being why you bought in the first place then maybe you should reconsider uh reconsider that mm, yeah i mean having a systematic approach a disciplined approach can really help you in <clears throat> tough times yes so adrian what's next on your list so the last one on my list is episode 177. This is called Lessons for a Successful Retirement. And this episode covers real life scenarios and the importance of optimizing and enjoying your lifestyle. I like a couple of bullet points that I've drawn out here because I think it really hits home with a lot of people where the first one is retirement is longer than you think. Planning your time is vital. And I think that's a, a maybe an overlooked one as well, where sometimes where you think about your finances, planning for the future, I think people tend to focus a lot on the money aspect of it, the finance aspect, the math, the numbers, all that. But what this episode is really showing you too, is sometimes you have to focus on what you're going to be doing, the hobbies, the activities, what you enjoy, how you're going to be spending that time can be very important because there might be times where you're super busy, you have a, a lot going on, and then sometimes there might not be that 
So that's something where we really want to focus on and plan for because it can really optimize, like I mentioned, your lifestyle and lead you maybe down a happier road. The next point I have on here is it talks about what retirees regret most about retirement. And that's where I talked about they use real life examples. And I think the best way sometimes is just to look at what other people are doing, seeing what works for some people, what doesn't, and seeing if you can pull any advice from that or if that's something too that you need to consider as well. Real life scenarios can be very valuable as well when it comes to planning. And then the last point I have on my list is how retirement can lead to a loss of identity and self-work too. I mean, this is something too where people uh, in their careers too, if they make career switches or something gets impacted, that's something that some people are really tied to and is a really big part of their life. So planning for that transition and adjusting can be very vital as well when it comes to the planning process. And I have a bonus one as well, but I want to hear what your opinion on that is, Roshan. I think that's a, a great one. Yeah, looking at at that uh, that episode and you know really thinking is it uh, ultimately is everyone just on their quest slash search for happiness, right? And you know that goes back to what we started this show on, which was the, your money or your life, right? And that that's the concept of the book is: Do you want more money or do you want your life back? And I'm not saying it. It, it always has to be one or the other. Uh, as you just said, everyone's situation is different, but I think that episode continues with the, the theme or the foundation of what we were here to talk about. You know, not just, uh, it's not just an investing podcast. It's not just about the numbers. Uh, uh, you know, when I say the numbers, I'm talking about not only investment performance, but I was really thinking about financial plan and the numbers there, but it's really about the individual and what you want uh, out of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my final point, I'd say probably one of the most important things that we talked about in the episode, I think we actually talked about this in multiple episodes as well. And it's can be crucial is to test drive your retirement. I think this is really important where you really see what it looks like, what your day-to-day -day routine is, what that experience and your lifestyle is actually going to look like, and just take it for a test drive, see what things that you enjoy. You might find things that you didn't expect or don't like, and that can really give you a guide on how you can plan for the future. And I think this can be applied to a lot of different aspects, depending on what stages of life you are. Just take it for a test drive, see how it goes, and see what adjustments you need to make after that before you make any big transitions in your life. Yeah, and I, um, uh, I think I mentioned this in, this in this episode, but I had a client who took her vacations from work for a few years. I, yeah, I think it was three years to go live where she thought she wanted to retire. Hmm. And then she eventually found the place and she found it earlier than planned. It either only took two or three years. And then uh, when she went there, she said, you know, I've got to got to live here. So she moved and her work said this was before COVID a decade, two decades before COVID, I think. But they had said, um, oh, well, will you can work remotely from there. So she really liked her job and was struggling with whether she wanted to she, by finding the place earlier than she thought she did and feeling like she had to be there. She just was retiring earlier than she thought uh, and was able to continue working. So, yes, I think test driving your retirement is uh uh, is a really, really good one. All right, Adrian, I've got my last episode on the list uh, prior to giving some honorable mentions, but um, episode number 57, where we talk about Roth conversions. So this is my first one, more on the planning side than the, than the investing side. And um, uh, I could be misquoting Eric on there, but I think he said something to the effect of... Uh, of there's no such thing as a free lunch, but this might be you know, kind of looking at the, the Roth conversions and the whole concept being that tax rates are expected to go up in 2026. You can convert now uh, at a lower rate than you'd likely be able to convert in two years. So it may be worth taking advantage of that. Now we have software and we do a lot of analysis to see if it makes sense for people to convert. So this is by by no means am I telling everyone go convert your Roth IRA. You know, please uh, do your research and do your do your homework. And we're here to help. If you need if you need someone to help you through it, please 
uh, email, call, uh, whatever works. And Adrian and I would be happy to happy to help you. But I think this is one worth looking at. And you've still got two years uh, before rates are scheduled to to change. You know, with the um, uh, Donald Trump Tax Act sunsetting at that point. So I think this is another good episode, actionable episode that is worth looking into. Yeah, I'm definitely glad that made your list because I remember my brother listened to that episode. He's like, wow, this is a really solid one. I'm going to keep this one off to the side and always refer to that one because that's some very valuable information. So yeah, I'm really happy that ended up making it on here, Roshan. <clears throat> so Adrian, have you gone through all five of yours or do you have one left? Uh, yeah, I went through all five. I'll just do a quick summary just a quick rundown yeah. for everybody again. The first one I have on my list is a financial guide for a better tomorrow. That's episode 197. Then I have bear market stages. Where are we now? That's episode 166. That's our most popular YouTube episode. Shout out. The next one is lessons for a successful retirement. That's episode 177. Then we have financial finish lines, episode 59. And then the last one, market volatility. This is split up between three episodes. I just have it as one episode. This is our first and second, third episode of the Retirement Lifestyle Show, the market volatility one. Yeah, excellent. And, you know, I've got, I'll, I'll go through my list and uh, give you a couple honorable mentions there. But um, episode 191, 10 Practical Steps to Wealth Building Success, 156 and 157, The Art of Long-Term Investing. 133, Insights from Where the Money Is by Adam Sissel. We went over his book. 132, How to Improve Investment Performance. Episode 57, Roth Conversions. Now, we've got a few episodes. Uh, I'm just going to name uh, in the honorable mention. We've got a few episodes with Jill Myers, the most recent one being episode 180, Five Tools for Your Self-Care Toolkit. As I mentioned earlier, we, uh, uh, we not only are looking at your financial success, but also your happiness, your mental success, and so on. And I think Jill does a great job of uh, sharing how you can uh, you know, take, care of your, take care of yourself and be happy in, in retirement. We also have a few episodes that we call Battle of the Plans, where you'll see Eric and I um, uh, will debate on different ways of doing the plan. And Adrian actually you know, sort of helps uh, look at it from an overall perspective and you know, keep us keep us on track with this debate. So what we did was we analyzed um, uh, people's financial plans separately and uh, or built their financial plans using just general case data, all not tied to one person, but you know based on a on a true story as you'll see in um, uh, in different movies. And so I think those episodes are also very interesting for a while. Uh, that was our most popular one was the Battle of the Plans episode where we talked about investing. So I think those that series of episodes called Battle of the Plans is another one that will be uh, is worth checking out and um, seeing a good healthy debate from from uh, financial planners on where uh, an individual situation can go. Uh, but there are so many others that that. Um, come to mind, episode 15, where we talk about real estate decisions. Our, uh, um, uh, we go over estate planning in episode 19 with Alfred Lee. We talk about episode 32 with uh, Robin Grain. We talk about uh, divorce uh, mediation. Uh, you know, 31, how to be a smart car buyer. There are so many different areas we touched on and so many uh, things that, that, as I said earlier, I think are timeless and um uh and can can continue like i mentioned jill myers the other one was episode another one is episode 47 how to win with healthy healthy living yeah, people debating working longer episode 42 we talk about uh working longer in the debate with whether uh with investing you know when people were starting to get concerned with inflation uh, episode 62, seven questions to consider about inflation in your portfolio. It does seem like they're a little bit more under control uh, right now than they uh, than they were before inflation wise. But if you have a concern for that, that that's something you can always go to. Uh, we had uh, episodes where we talked about things that um, uh, we had on episode 
uh, 74, we had two Eric Olsons on because that's where he talked about impact investing with Dignity Coconuts, where there was uh, investing in that space, impact investing, episode 68 with uh, Buddy Rathmel is another one. So there are so many episodes that I ended up um, crossing off along the way. I shouldn't say crossing off, but putting at the honorable mention area as well. So that's just to name a few. I know I've gone on on that, so I'll, I'll stop there. But uh, for those of you listening, we hope this you'll find this helpful by look, being able to revisit. Maybe you haven't listened to some of those episodes. Maybe you're a more recent listener, or maybe you have and they're worth checking out again, depending on where you are at the moment, whether you're focused on investing, uh, mental health, making a transition in your life, whether that's into retirement or to another job. We just have a wealth of information we think can help you on your journey. Adrian, do you have anything to add? I just went on and on for a long time. Uh, no problem at all. I mean, I'll just pretty much open the floor up to our listeners and viewers. I mean, you just heard Rosha. We covered a, a lot of great topics. And if you say, hey, guys, I can't believe you haven't touched on this out of all 200 plus of your episode, please let us know. That would be that'd be awesome. I just feel like we have an encyclopedia of knowledge and have covered a lot, a lot of ground here. And I would be so happy just to hear something maybe we haven't touched on more. Maybe we can brainstorm together, Roshan, and figure that out. But if there's something that you really want us to touch on, our door is always open and we'd be happy to consider it. Yes, we, we, we've definitely got episodes from uh, listener uh, feedback and comment, and we're happy to share whatever information we already have. And we're also happy to do any research and analysis. We're here, here to help. Thank you for listening to us for the you know, 200 episodes, or if this is your first episode, thank you for joining us. Take control and achieve your goals. Schedule a conversation with Roshan, Adrian, or Eric today at retirementlifestyleshow.com. Roshan and Eric are certified financial planner practitioners. They, along with Adrian, are investment advisor representatives and serve clients across the U.S. with financial planning and investment advice through RSA Wealth. If you found this show helpful, gain knowledge, or enjoy the time you spent with us, tell your friends and leave us a five-star review. This will help others discover the show. To access our show notes, to download any of the tools mentioned in today's podcast, to ask us a question, or to schedule a conversation, go to retirementlifestyleshow.com. All opinions expressed by podcast hosts and guests are solely their own. While based on information they believe is reliable, neither Arate Well nor its affiliates warrants its completeness or accuracy, nor do their opinions reflect the opinion of Arate Well. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and should not be regarded as specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Before making any decisions, consult a professional. The show hosts offer investment advice through Arte Wealth Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor, and securities through Arte Wealth Management, LLC, member FEMRA, SIPC, and NFA. Finally, our music is The Chance by Jason Shaw in Audionautics. It's part of the YouTube Audio Library and it's licensed under a Creative Commons license. I am Ray Voices. Thank you for listening.